Hello everyone, welcome to the RP Games YouTube channel. My name is Ralph and this is The Monster Inside, an audio-visual novel by Random Seed Games. This game is available for free on Steam, so you can go and check it out. I will of course leave all the necessary links down in the description. This has the film noir theme, so what do we need for that? We need a Private Investigator, Chain Smoking, we need a Damsel in Distress, one of the two or maybe both can have an alcohol problem, and some dark and mysterious past. And let's discover if all the elements of the film noir are here, hidden somewhere deep inside the monster, inside, inside. My head pounded, air still ringing slightly. Some of the worst nightmares I had in years left me feeling like I'd been punched in the jaw. But just like any other day, I dragged myself to the office. There was another notice on the door from Mayor Venetti's office. Permits out of date. They didn't like me much and were trying to drown me in paperwork. Well, we have the chain smoking going on. And a really cool soundtrack, actually. I really dig the music. And the look of it as well. Very curious to see where we go from here. It was a slow month. Weeks since I'd had any real case to work on. So I passed the time pacing the office, smoking, Staring at the mirror in the corner, safely covered with an old bed sheet. I don't dare look at my own reflection. I'm too afraid what I might see. Afraid someday I might have to face what I really am. The girl came in so quiet I nearly choked on my cigarette. Mister, please. You gotta help me, mister. Calm down now. Sit. And talk slow. Okay, thanks. It's just... No one will listen to me. Just tell me your tale. I'm listening. She eyed me with just a dash of suspicion as I tossed back a handful of pills and chased them with a swig of whiskey. I could tell this might take a while. Her name was Lily. She told me she was his mistress. The man all over the newspapers. The infamous banker, Mr. Reginald Farnsworth. Mr. Farnsworth was a drunk, philandering bastard. But this girl seemed generally concerned that he had recently gone missing. Less concerned about the fact that Mr. Farnsworth's wife had just turned up dead in Central Park two nights ago. You don't understand. He just couldn't have done it. He hated his wife, but he couldn't have killed her. Everyone thinks it was him, and no one believes me. He's gotta be in trouble. I ain't saying I believe you, but what makes you think he's in danger? Well, Mr... Um... Jack. You can just call me Jack. Jack. Whoever did that to his wife must have been the one who took him. He would have never left without me. He promised me. I'm sure Mr. Farnsworth promised this poor girl a lot of things. Please. The cops won't listen to me and they want to bring him in on charges. You gotta prove it wasn't him before they find him. Honestly, I doubt they are in too much of a hurry. Farnsworth had 
practically the entire police force in his deep pockets. Probably why they hadn't found much yet. If they found him and brought him in, it would be due to public pressure. Sometimes a mob with pitchforks is more dangerous than one man with money. You got my curiosity. You might not like what I find. Oh, thank you, Mr. Jack. Thank you, but please, be careful. I don't think this was just any murderer or kidnapper. I think it... I think it was a... A beast? Beast. The word struck me funny. Like when you jar your elbow in a hard corner. Not a word many use these days. Except in hushed whispers and bedtime stories for children. Oh, they were real enough, alright. Just got better at hiding. Controlling their unseemly urges. But I hadn't seen any monsters in nearly 15 years. Back when I was still a cop myself. Well, that is definitely an interesting theory. I just... I have a feeling about it. Something tells me you can get to the bottom of it. You're good at this sort of thing. Sure. Can't you see how busy I am with cases? I replied a little too harshly. Sarcasm wasn't my strong suit. I reassured her some more and sent her on her way. I didn't want to scare her, but I warned her before she left to keep her doors locked and call me if she saw anything suspicious. I didn't know if she was in any danger herself, but better safe than sorry. That night I made my way down to Central Park. It was a long shot, but maybe there was something there the cops had missed. The scene was already picked clean by the cops days ago. I've got a knack for finding the things others overlook. A knack. More of a symptom of a condition. Other, less useful symptoms I kept in check. But for the time being, my keen sense of smell would come in handy. It was faint but I could smell it before I even approached the police line. The scent was less of a thing and more of an emotion. Seduction. A strangely familiar smell. I expected the scent of trepidation or maybe even outright fear, but Mrs. Farnsworth seemed to have been at the height of pleasure when she left this world. Brought new meaning to crime of passion. Pushing the thought from my mind it was time to get down to business. Oh okay, so you can interact with the uh, with the scene here. A burn mark on a nearby tree caught my eye. I ran my finger along its length and felt a chill down my spine. It wasn't just any burn mark. This was the mark of an ancient magic. It's doubtful the cops would have picked up on it. Could Lily have been right? Something unnatural was at play here. But I was no stranger to the strange. Muddy footprints everywhere. Difficult to pick anything from the prints the cops left behind in their haste. But cops don't wear $2,000 pairs of carquinos. Looked like Mr. Farnsworth was there that night and walked away on his own two feet. And after looking around for a while longer, I realized the park had given up all it was hiding from me, 
So I trudged back to my apartment. My head hit my pillow like it owed me money. The next morning I was reeling from another bout of ghoulish nightmares. But I tried to hide my discomfort when I saw Lily was already sitting outside my office. She waited wordlessly as I unlocked the door and ripped down another notice from the mayor's office. I motioned her to step inside. Seemingly afraid of what I might say, she finally worked up the courage to ask. So? What did you find? Well, I've got some good news. Farnsworth might still be alive. Probably shouldn't have given her false hope like that, but she seemed like she needed something to hold on to right then. She didn't need to know about the mark on the tree. How do you know that? Where is he? There were signs he was at the scene and slipped away. My tone was indifferent towards her as I turned and grabbed the bottle from my desk drawer. The dryness in my throat made it difficult to swallow my meds. But you don't know where he went? Do you think the news this morning is related? What news is that? Haven't you heard? Yeah, but maybe you should tell me what you know. They found the police chief's wife dead down by the docks. They say it happened last night. Let me guess. Shiva Mato is missing too. My face might have betrayed a hint of satisfaction as she confirmed my suspicions, but it faded quickly. Amato was a shit cop and a shit chief. He was half the reason I left the forest. But now his wife was dead, and I had more questions than I did the day before. The gears in my head started to spin, which wasn't helped by the splitting pain in my temples. I told Lily I needed time to work, and she left slightly dejected, wanting more answers than I could provide. The night after the cops had cleared out the docks, I would slip down and see what I could uncover concerning Mrs. Amato's untimely demise. The cold air smelled strongly of salt and oil and... Could it be? That smell again, like someone had bottled pure arousal and used it as perfume. It hit me like a long forgotten memory, but the sensual fumes soon gave way to a rush of adrenaline. I knew exactly what the scent reminded me of, and that scared me more than not knowing. I looked down at my hands, shaking. Nightmares. The headaches. No, I was better now, reformed, I had to focus, no jumping to conclusions, follow the evidence. Red Phoenix cigarettes, same shitty brand I smoke every day, everyone's got their vice. There, just there, the smallest piece of purple fabric, torn and caught in a splinter of a board. The police report didn't say anything about Mrs. Amato wearing purple, and it was certainly of a quality that you wouldn't expect down here. Don't see too many high sighted types around flaunting royal purple threads. I pulled out my own pack of reds and lit up. Could already feel another headache coming on. But looking out of the waves seemed to help me forget. 
The cold helped me push down the uncomfortable thoughts that had been bubbling to the top of my brain. I honestly don't remember the walk back to the office. Apparently I spent the night in my easy chair. The air from the docks lingered on my clothes. It was still dark out. No, I checked the clock. How long had I been out? Had I really slept through the entire next day? A newspaper was sitting under the door. As I stood to fetch it, I nearly fell over. A wave of nausea hitting me like a ton of bricks. I steadied myself and regained my composure. Before I even picked up the paper, I could already read the headline. Breaking, mare missing, wife found dead. Two cases is a coincidence, three is a pattern. The cops would come asking questions soon. They knew I had a history of antagonizing all of the victims. I stumbled to my desk and slammed back three days worth of inhibitor pills. Couldn't take any chances. I had to investigate the scene to be sure. I threw on my jacket and went to the door. Lily caught me off guard on the other side. Jack, where are you off to? I've been trying to reach you all day. I'm sorry, Lily, but I don't have the time to talk. I have to go. Okay, but we need to talk when you get back. Stay safe. She gave me a soft kiss on the cheek as I rushed off. Part of me wanted to stay and tell her it would be okay, but it would be a lie. The alley was located just behind the high-rise apartments where Mayor Venetti and his wife lived. I could tell the police were spooked now. The crime scene was even sloppier than the last. They hadn't even bothered to submit the trash into evidence. Why wouldn't they at least look through the dumpster? It seemed untouched. No one wants to do the dirty work. But I know how to find the good stuff. It really doesn't take long if you know what to look for. Lightweight bags usually mean someone was dumping documents. If you were lucky, they didn't bother to shred them. Jackpot. Shell companies. Shady stock trades, bribes. I knew Mayor Vinetti was crooked, but this was unbelievable. And there was more. Letters between Mayor Vinetti and Chief Amato, talking about me. How they were trying to get me shut down. They didn't like me snooping around crime scenes all the time. Well, they weren't here to stop me snooping around this one. Venetti scar. If he's still alive, why wouldn't he have left in a scar? It didn't make any sense. I honestly wasn't too motivated to find him, but the stakes were too high. My bet was edging towards the unthinkable. As I searched around for anything that might assuage my fears, I caught the scent again. It overwhelmed my other senses with undulating pleasure. It was intoxicating. A weapon used on the weak willed. A weapon I knew all too well. I thought it had been many years since I had used it. Was there another like me? Was I being framed? It wasn't possible. Was it? I was taking my inhibitors, I was reformed, but the nightmares, the headaches, the memory lapses, I couldn't even trust myself. I started walking back out the alley when 
something shiny caught my eye. A watch. Not just any watch, though. My watch. How long had my wrist been bare? Surely I just dropped it when I first came down the alley. I checked the time just before I left the office, hadn't I? Or had I used the wall clock? I couldn't be sure. I couldn't be sure of anything. So I ran. I don't know why I ran back to the office. The cops would probably show up any minute to knock the door down and cart me away. They would put it together before long. Maybe it would be best for everyone if I simply faced my own reflection. But Lily was still there, waiting for me. Jack, what's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. My own ghost, come back to haunt me from the past. You're not making any sense, Jack. Come, sit down. You don't understand. You're not safe around me. Took a good last look at her as I prepared to shove her out the door. I noticed she was wearing the same thing she had when she first came to the office three days ago. A beautiful purple dress. Odd that I hadn't really noticed before, but it made her seem out of place, out of time. And it was frayed around the edges, torn in places. My chair caught my fall as my knees failed me. It was you. You are the monster. Succubus. Oh, Jack. We are one and the same, you and I. We are both monsters. I'm simply more honest with myself. There's no such thing as reformation. Those pills you take only make you dull. Beasts like us should never suppress our true natures, as you have, Incubus. Those men were probably dead too now figured. She probably took them to her lair and harvested their seed. So you've done all this just to wake me up? You could say that, though it seemed enough just to have you doubt yourself. You believed you were still capable of such horrors, which means deep down you probably are. You can't escape it. Now I need you to complete the deed. You took my watch. Messed with my head. Oh, don't act like I didn't do you a favor. Those men hated you and wanted you gone. And now they are gone. I mustered the strength to stand again moving casually to the window by the corner. She was right about one thing. I was dull, weak, compared to her. If I refused her and she attacked me, I was a dead man. I had to keep her talking. Never met a succubus who seduces and kills women. Oh, please. Such a 14th century stereotype. I don't discriminate when it comes to pleasures of the flesh. But I do still need an incubus like yourself to take the tainted seed I've harvested from those awful men and plant it among the fertile masses for me. I'm tired of draining my lovers just to survive. I'm ready to settle down and start a family. <laughs> that maniacal laughter. I positioned myself carefully, making sure she was looking my direction. Sorry, but I'm not your guy. With a quick flick of my wrist, I whipped the old bed sheet off of the corner mirror. 
Lily was blinded by her own reflection, sucked into the mirror with a painful, monstrous scream, trapped. Shielding my own eyes, I pulled a revolver from my desk side drawer, aimed it at the mirror, and fired. And there we go, a very short game, this one. If you've enjoyed that, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more, then by all means, hit the subscribe button and that bell icon as well. And for now, thank you very much for watching. And see you in the next video.